Hello, I'm Kirk Hansen, Executive Director of the Markelis Center for Applied Ethics at Santa Clara University. Uh, we're here today with Professor Liu Bao Chung. Professor Liu is a professor at the International University of Business and Economics in Beijing, China. He is a scholar that specializes in corporate social responsibility and business ethics, heads the Center for International Business Ethics in Beijing, and is a national commentator on Chinese television about issues of business ethics and corporate social responsibility. Professor Liu was here for a conference at the Markala Center yesterday on doing business in China, doing ethical business in China, and we were delighted to have you with us, Professor Liu. Likewise. Good. One of the things we want to capture on this video is the key point you made yesterday. You gave the keynote address identifying some of the most important trends for companies, uh, Western companies that want to operate in China, and for Chinese companies that are trying to address business ethics questions and corporate social responsibility questions. Can you give us highlights, two or three of the key points that you uh, made in your presentation? Yeah, one key proposition I made is the ethical economy. Uh, the concept of ethical economy derives from the fact that uh, you know, the economic mod uh, mod uh, modality really shifts from natural economy to industrial economy and then to knowledge economy and people feel contented about the knowledge economy already uh, for which I really have uh, some suspicion over which uh, the uh, knowledge economy or information economy does not solve the real purpose of business. It, because the real purpose of business is really how to serve the people and how to build a harmonious society together with the uh, environmental uh, health and also health care uh, together with the uh, uh, society, social developments. Mm -hmm. So therefore, ethic economy has a large content in which uh, the, uh, in the, uh, under the context of globalization and people uh, from different parts of the world can be integrated towards a better business world. So you're optimistic that China is moving inexorably uh, along an economic development path which leads to then making sure that the economy serves human beings and serves if ethical purposes. Yeah, I think of the fact that uh, China takes uh, one-fifth of the whole world population. So the, uh, the direction China is heading to is highly profound in impacting the entire humanity. So, uh, you know, by the uh, uh, basic assumption that when the uh, GDP is moving forward, the environmental issue and also the so social responsibility issue can improve. But uh, we cannot wait it uh, to happen on a natural pace, but uh, uh, companies and governments and individuals will have to do something proactively so that we are moving on the right track. So that we advance business ethics and we advance corporate responsibility uh, so that it serves the people. Yeah, uh, since the introduction of market economy the 35 years ago, so companies have been playing a uh, decisive role uh, in that, uh, in the entire landscape of human welfare and uh, particularly now uh, during the last session of the China Congress, um, the, the tonality has really shifted more onto the market play because uh, we, we substituted the, uh, uh, the fundamental role of market economy into a decisive role by what we term as leakonomics. So leakonomics. Leakonomics, because leakonomics, Le uh, is the uh, Chinese new uh, premier, mm -hmm. and uh, he proposes that uh, the, uh, to deepen Chinese reform, we need to attach more importance on the decisive role of the market, uh, in which they can really reduce the, uh, uh, the influence of the government or intervention of the government, and to let a lazy fear uh, the atmosphere mm -hmm. for business to grow. But this well also brings a challenge for businesses that uh, when they are given more freedom, uh, how do they exercise it mm -hmm. to serve a better world instead of only profit seeking. Mm -hmm. And in the last year or two, 
what are the, the most important developments that would lead business to play more of a positive uh, role uh, toward the people in China and elsewhere? So one fact is that Chinese businesses are getting more noticeable in the whole world. Uh, for example, in a matter of 10 years, the uh, Chinese companies have been growing on a very rapid pace, you know, from uh, only three in number on the Fortune 500 to 79. And uh, they produce a huge impact on not only on the Chinese market, but also on the world market. And the other is that uh, there are more um, of the Chinese uh, companies, they are not only content with exporting made in China, but rather they go ahead and uh, uh, place direct investment overseas, mm -hmm. and ac either through the acquisition of resources or uh, to work together on technology development, etc. And uh, the Chinese government is also attaching a greater importance to the uh, social uh, impact that these companies are producing. So s since 2008, the, uh, the government issued a circular for all state-owned companies to issue CSR report, mm -hmm. and uh, China stock exchanges are demanding for CSR report as a prerequisite for IPO of those companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, most recently, China incre uh, introduced a, a credit rating system for Chinese companies performing overseas, either uh, in terms of export or in terms of investment. So, so these CSR reports cover behavior in China and also their growing role in Africa and uh, elsewhere? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, besides that, uh, uh, the, uh, this year, uh, China has revised the criminal law that uh, corruption overseas will be treated equally uh, as a crime, you know, the, uh, as a domestic corruption. Mm -hmm. And uh, also China joined the uh, uh, United Nations Convention on Anti-Corruption, mm -hmm. and for which we, uh, in addition to uh, the Party Disciplinary Committee and also to the Office of Anti-Corruption, we also set up an office for the prevention of corruption in China. So, so the, the extraterritorial projection of Chinese laws about uh, improper behavior uh, is, is a part of the policy now. Just like the United States, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act binds the behavior of American companies wherever they operate. That's right. So I think the China is a quick learner and uh, also this is uh, really a necessity mm -hmm. because the, uh, the country of origin effect is already the uh, pro producing influence on the Chinese pricing uh, strategy, mm -hmm. on the uh, uh, overseas investment strategy, and how do they really get a harmon harmonious relationship with the local community is a reality question instead of a you know, hypothetical one. As they project abroad, they suddenly have that interest in the good relationship. China, Chinese companies, just as American companies were like ambassadors for the American nation, similarly, these Chinese companies are representatives of the Chinese people as they go abroad. Yeah, exactly. Actually, uh, my partner, uh, which is the uh, business network in the uh, uh, southern part of Africa, has recently done a survey that uh, there is from which they, uh, you really have very mixed uh, attitudes towards the Chinese economic presence over mm -hmm. there. And nearly 50% is also accusing the uh, neon colonization mm -hmm. of the Chinese uh, uh, companies over there. And also from the fact that uh, many Chinese companies, they get engaged in, into the ex extractive industries. And that really uh, brings the unpleasant feeling towards the impact over the environment and over the energy security overseas. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we have to really to have a turnaround. And besides, the China Chinese companies need also to, uh, to strike a balance between the local development and uh, 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 the uh, really Chinese market needs. Yes. Yeah. And uh, well, also that uh, actually, uh, the uh, another issue is that many Chinese companies they used to be 
you know, very much uh, uh, likely to build a sort of a Chinatown, you know, everywhere in uh, mm -hmm. uh, overseas by bringing more Chinese stuff over there. But now they have to change to give more employment of opportunities to the local community. Mm -hmm. We'll pursue these issues and more in uh, additional videos that we'll do in this series. Uh, we want to thank Professor Liu for visiting the Markala Center at Santa Clara University and for being part of our conference on doing business in China. Thank you. Thank you.